Hey guys, great to see you on another episode of Code This Not That. Hope you had a great weekend and just to get you up and running, we'll be having a weekly challenge on classes and inheritance. For those of you who have no idea about inheritance, we've got you covered. Say for instance, you have com- common object like animals and you will also have some specific objects like aquatic animals or terrestrial animals based upon their habitat. So this is what inheritance is all about. In this challenge, you are going to write some similar classes that are highly scalable. Since I didn't give you much to work with, I'll just lay in a few steps for you. We'll start with a few class methods based on their food intake. It'll be herbivorous or carnivorous. I'll just write a small description for each uh, class. So first herbivorous. So this will be having a static keyword. What exactly is a static keyword? If you need a variable that needs to be accessed even before instantiation, so this is what you use. You can right away call it like herbivorous.description and it will show you the following output. Now you can have multiple methods to this particular class and uh, this can be based upon the habitat. Likewise, we'll do something for carnivorous as well. So we'll do class carnivorous and we'll have a static description and maybe since it's carnivorous, we'll feed them chicken or something. Also, it might scale over time based upon the habitat. So it can have multiple methods. Now, we'll make it into some kind of enum that is available in JS, but in TS it's much more better. So we'll use object.freeze so that it doesn't change and we'll provide some key called wedge or meat and we'll pass the corresponding um, class itself. So first we'll create a class for animals. Now I'll call this class as animal and obviously we are going to capitalize it. Just a naming convention, not a big deal. Now this is going to take in a few parameters in the constructor like name and food that they feed on. We'll assign it to the class variables. Now I think you're good to go to create a zoo on your own. Others you could follow along for some cool stuff in inheritance. First we'll create a class for animals that live on land. Now you need to use extends keyword in order to inherit the parent class. Now we are going to use the terrestrial class that is going to extend the animal itself. As you can see, the animal is our base class and it is being extended by the terrestrial class. Also, you can notice that I'm not using any plural, plural form like animals or terrestrials. Just some naming convention to keep in mind. Now we'll initialize a constructor with the arguments. And for those of you who checked my last video, you already know the super keyword. Here we use it to pass the arguments to the parent class itself. And we'll individually assign the other variable we'll also have some method specific to the land animals. As you can see, we are just assigning the speed variable alone. Now coming to the methods that are specific to land animals, I'll create something called displayability. I'll just do some simple assertions and form a sentence. I'll use template literals and uh, so and so animal is going to run or walk based upon the speed and uh, the speed is going to be so and so kilometer per hour. Now, coming to the parent class, I'll construct an object which will happen during the instantiation of either the animal or the terrestrial class. Also, uh, we'll create a static variable that will hold all our animals. Now we need to um, write a setter method in order to push an object which will contain all the values of the animals. Now I hope you remember the enum that we created during the beginning of the video. So what we are going to do is we are going to combine all the values that we have regarding the animal like uh, the speed will be coming from the terrestrial and uh, so we are having a value parameter in the setter. So what we'll do is we'll directly access animal dot underscore animals. Since I said it's a static um, keyword we can directly call it and uh, we are using push method like uh, to send an object into it. We are destructuring the animal that we already have and uh, we are also destructuring the input parameter that is value. Now coming to the last thing we are going to have the description. So th this description is nothing but the one that we previously created um, from herbivorous or carnivorous. So as you look into it we already have a description here. Now all we need to do is we have to check uh, where this description is coming from. 
so i am going to take the enum and i am going to pass it uh, the food that is um, either veg or meat so this will give you the herbivorous or the carnivorous instance itself so as you look into the food enum uh, it shows that uh, it is going to provide you with the class itself now since we are getting the class we can uh, access its property that is description which will return either of these one uh, for all those nerds we are not going to complain about missing the omnivores because i'm just teaching you code not science now let's call the setter method for the terrestrial class using super keyword now i'll just pass the speed parameter and uh, this will create the animal object now also we'll provide a getter method and uh, this will return the animals for you you can um, use it directly but uh, i'm going to write another detail method so this is going to return detail for one particular animal alone i promise this is going to be the last now similarly um we are just going to find based upon the name we can also create uh, other class methods that can uh, inherit the animal like uh, for the animals that live on sea we can create an aquatic but you are not going to do that since uh, you get the gist of it this is something that you can take up as an exercise now let's put the code into use i'll instantiate the class and uh, it will be a line that eats meat and runs at a speed of 80 km per hour and obviously it will return this output but uh, this is not what i'm interested in and uh, we definitely didn't go through all these troubles to output this so let's find a practical use case say for instance um you have lot of data coming from db uh, for instance um, right we'll write a practical use case and uh, we'll have some sample data to work with so this is the data that you are going to work with um, this is the data from db and uh, it has multiple animals now this is where the fun begins we'll map the data into usable data for our ui maybe i'll just uh, take in each object and map it into a new terrestrial class and uh, since this is an object rather than uh, arguments i'll use object dot values and uh, pass in the object itself what it will do is it will convert it into an array of arguments similar to this one now of course we get the values but it's still an array so what we need to do is uh, finally we need it need to spread it into strings so that we get arguments out of it now time to see our code in action i'll just use uh, console log to show the mapped data and uh, we'll put console log mapped data so you can see that uh, it will return the whole class itself and uh, this will contain the base class and the methods we wrote on it so what we can do with it well sky is the limit you can simply map the class return the name alone whatever you want you can do with it so for a simple use case what i'll do is uh, i'll show you like uh, we'll just comment this out what we'll do is we'll try to do something cool with this um, class that we have right now i'll just create a console log again and i'll map the data and this time i'll just return the name alone so as you look into it uh, this will return just the names in a simple array so as you look into the type of this this is nothing but a simple array rather than the class itself so you can access all the properties of an array method here now this applies to any such methods it's not just uh, the name you can do anything so i'll comment this out and i'll show you another thing Uh, you know that we have getter setter methods there so we can also do a getter method like we can do animal dot detail and it will return a json object and it will contain all the description about our animal so i think uh, this shows you the general gist of it like uh, whatever could be done from such class variables and uh, getters setters so now we have everything in a clean and concise way now obviously the question arises why would i go through all these troubles to have such simple outputs trust me what you learn differs a lot from practical use case in the organization and uh, we are just scratching the surface in writing clean code 
Now coming to the key takeaways, definitely use inheritance by grouping similar code so that you don't repeat yourself. Have getters, setters across your class since it is kind of syntactic sugar on top of existing JS functions. Also, I believe over the next few years, we'll have support for private variables across all browsers rather than just Node and Chrome. And uh, have simple static values specific to class with, uh, within itself so that it's widely accessible. Determine which function goes into the base class. Also do keep in mind that uh, you can perform task in constructor. Of course, there's more to it. Do your fieldwork, write all the code, teach me something new in the comment section. If you like this video, do leave a like, share and thumbs up. I guess I'm just blabbering. Subscribe to my workbench guys for more such videos. Until next time, this is Suren signing off.